What's up everybody? In today's video, we're gonna talk about creating a custom UI button. As you can see here in my simulator, uh, here on the bottom, we got you know the blue color, we got a border. When you tap it, it does a shake animation. We got a drop shadow, it's got rounded corners. Uh, and then you can see this top button has nothing. So we're gonna do this both programmatically and in storyboard so you can see how both of those work. Now, the way we're gonna do this, you can see here, I have the beginnings of a massive view controller, which, you know, as a beginner, this often happens to you. So basically what I got here, I'm um, building this button programmatically, you know, I have my button, we're in our view controller here, and all my button styling, you know, set up the, well, constraints have to be there, but, you know, style the bottom button, you know, add the shadow to the bottom button, add the shake animation to the bottom button, right? This is all in my view controller. And the only thing I've done in this view controller right now is set up that bottom button. And you can see we're at, you know, 84 lines of code uh, just with that, you know, button setup. So the idea behind a custom UI button is you want to get all this button setup code into its own class uh, so it's reusable for multiple buttons, you know? So what, what you're gonna see here uh, when we're done here is both the top button and the bottom button are going to look the same because they're both gonna be of type, you know, our custom button class, whatever we'll name it here in a little bit. So again, to reiterate, the idea is to just clean up your view controllers, get all this button code into its own class and make it reusable. So let's do that. And how we're gonna do this is I'm basically going to refactor all this code into its own custom class. Now, the reason I didn't wanna just sit here and, you know, type out all this code, so you, you know, watch me type all this out is this this video would have been a half hour if I typed all this out, explained it all to you. Uh, as I'm refactoring, I'll be explaining what the code does. So if you are a super beginner, you'll still get the gist of, of what this code means. Uh, but for the most part, the point of the video is to show you how to get all this code into its own custom class and how to use that class. So step one is to create our file that's going to have our custom UI button uh, code in it. So if you click on the custom UI button folder, do command N for a new file. Uh, Swift file is fine. Um, just We'll just call this custom button. Again, you can call this, you know, for example, in my projects, we have like our onboarding buttons are a little different than the rest of our buttons. So I have, you know, like an AL onboard button or AL tutorial button, you know, whatever button this is going to be, just name it appropriately. So hit create and there we go. Uh, now we have our custom button. I always like to drag it up uh, in there. So because this is a UI button, uh, let's get rid of foundation, do UI kit, go ahead and create class uh, custom button. And again, this is what you named your file. It is a subclass of UI button. And we'll go ahead and create our opening and close brackets. We'll give ourselves a ton of space because we're gonna have a lot of code coming in here. So the first order of business is we need to override our initializer method. So let's do that override uh, init with frame and then super dot init with frame pass in the, the frame there. And basically why we need to override this is because when we initialize a custom button, we're not initializing a UI button anymore, we're initializing a custom button. So basically when we initialize that button, we wanna do all our styling and all that stuff that's going to be in this class. And uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. And as you can see here, Xcode is yelling at us saying that we need another required initializer. Uh, the reason you need this one here, this uh, coder, a decoder, uh, is for storyboard purposes. This is for when you initialize a button via storyboard, which we're going to do, uh, if you look here, with this top button. We'll, we'll get to that in a bit. But this top button is on the storyboard, which again, I'll show you, but uh, that's where this one is gonna come into play. So let's go ahead, uh, get rid of that, call the super, super.init uh, coder, NS coder, and pass in a decoder right there, just the name we're passing in. And then uh, here as well, we're going to call the rest of the functions that we're going to write here. And I usually put all that in a setup button function. So let's go ahead and uh, write that here. So func, uh, setup button, and we'll fill this in here in a little bit, but you wanna call this uh, here. So setup button, and then setup button. You can call it config button, whatever you wanna call it. But basically again, this override initializer is, if we go back to our view controller here, this is the initializer here. We're gonna change this in a little bit to instead of a UI button, a custom button, but uh, I don't wanna get ahead of ourselves. But this is the initializer that happens uh, here. And then this is the initializer that happens when you initialize one of these uh, custom buttons via storyboard. So in both those cases, we wanna call setup button, which is kind of uh, the function we're gonna to use to set up everything about our custom button. This is where we're gonna refactor all that stuff in the view controller out to here. So let's start doing that. Let's go back to our view controller here. And this is gonna be a lot of copying and pasting um, because we're basically just refactoring it. So uh, let's go ahead and take this set shadow button here, uh, cut and into the custom UI button, uh, paste. So now we are setting our shadow, but you notice we don't need to do it on the bottom custom button specifically, right? So this is gonna be any button that is a of class custom button. So we're literally gonna hold our option key 
uh, to highlight vertically like that. I missed the period, but whatever. Delete, uh, hold the option key again, <laughs> highlight the period, delete. I'm not sure if that lined up right, so I'll we'll highlight and do uh, control I. It didn't, so now that lines up. So now, and I made this function uh, private because I don't want people outside of this class to access it. If you're a beginner, don't worry about that. Um, so now as part of setup button, we definitely wanna call uh, set shadow. So now you can see here, my setup button is kind of like the place where I'm putting all these functions in um, that will get called. And now we're just gonna you know, rinse and repeat that a bit. So let's go back to our view controller. And uh, I want this shake animation. So command X into the custom UI button. And then here we go, we're getting the errors again, because again, we don't need to call this bottom custom button specifically. So we're just basically deleting that uh, everywhere because again, this is every custom button is going to have this, not just that specific custom button here. So uh, it also makes the code look a little neater. Tab that over. Uh, there you go. So this is real quick. Uh, again, I'm not going to dive into this code because I don't want to derail the conversation, but this is just you know, using some core animation to create that shake animation. Uh, if you want to dive into this code a little more, I have one of the very first videos I ever did was all about creating these animations. Uh, I'll link to that below. And again, this set shadow is just more, uh, you know, UI setup stuff. You know, you can set, set shadow color, offset, radius, opacity, and this clips to bounds and mass to bounds, you know, shows the shadow. It gets a little tricky with this when you're having the the rounded corners and a shadow. Um, again, I don't want to digress too much. All right, back to our view controller. Uh, let's see here. I can get rid of this set shadow because we're doing that. Uh, now this style bottom button, let's, let's take all this here and go to the custom button. And let's just call this style button. And we want to call that after, uh, actually we can, let, let's do this. Let's put set shadow in style button here. And then just because that is technically kind of style just for like naming purposes and again we can get rid of all this bottom uh, custom button stuff so if we hold option highlight vertically delete that uh, now we should be good to go so now when we call so again when our, when our button first gets initialized whether that's the storyboard with this one uh, or when you're doing it programmatically what's going to happen is setup button is going to get called when setup button gets called here we're going to call uh call style button and actually now that i'm saying this out loud i realize this is uh redundant we're actually just going to do uh all this stuff in setup button see that was like one too many levels of abstraction that was unnecessary uh, in my opinion so backing up when our buttons get initialized uh we're going to call setup button which is going to call set sh shadow so that's going to set the shadow we're going to set all our stylings which is our, our title color the actual words on it which we probably don't want to do because we don't want every single button to say bottom right um i mean maybe you do maybe you want every single button to say next maybe you're creating a custom next button but in our case we don't want the title of each button to be the same so let's go ahead and delete that and we'll, we'll have to add that uh into the view controller or we could create a custom initializer to you know pass in the title of that button so we would initialize our buttons that would take in a parameter of a string and that would be the title uh i worry about going down too many different rabbit holes i mean we could go down a lot um so to keep this tutorial fairly straightforward we'll just go ahead and do that in the view controller so let's go back to our view controller and see what's left here what do we got here um as you can see xcode's yelling at us because this is no longer a function we move that away uh we'll come back to that uh add in the action we still have to do that here um tech kind of um get, get rid of this style bottom button we no longer need that uh and we are gonna have to do the constraints here uh you know because that does rely on you know the view controller so uh it looks like we've trimmed out all that style stuff into uh our custom button so uh the last thing we need to do is instead of initializing you know this bottom custom button as a ui button now it is going to be our custom button that we've been working on creating so let's go back let's create this or call this a custom button so now what i can do here where i have commented out on line 39 when i want to shake the button Remember we had that shake function here. Well, now that shake fun uh, function is on our custom button. Uh, so, you know, shake, shake bottom button. Actually, let's just call this shake uh, better naming because there's no concept of a bottom button in our custom button. Uh, it's just any button that's a custom button. So anyway, back to view controller. Instead of calling shake bottom button, we're going to call uh, bottom custom button because that is our, uh, you know, instantiation of the custom button dot 
.shake. Well, autocomplete hasn't caught up yet, but uh, it is going to be .shake. There you go. So now every single button that is of type custom button, you're going to be able to type .shake after to shake the button if you if you like. So now we're pretty much done uh, the, with the programmatic version. Again, to walk through this code, this is just setting up the constraints uh, to, to have the button on the bottom. Uh, we're adding an action. This is adding a, a tap target for, for, you know, touch up inside. So when you tap the bottom button, you call uh, the bottom button tapped, which is down here, and that is going to shake the button. So now let's clean up these brackets real quick. Uh, we now let's switch to storyboard. So when it comes to programmatic, we're done. And you can see all we really had to do was change this from UI button to custom button. And now we get all the behavior that is defined over here in custom button. So let's go ahead and stop that and run it again, just to prove that it still looks the same and everything is functioning correctly. So here we are, but now remember, we, we lost our title, I forgot. Um, but you see you tap it, it still shakes. Uh, let's go ahead and add our title real quick, back to the view controller. Um, for now, I'm just gonna do this in, in view to load here. We would do uh, bottom custom button dot set title, and the title is going to be bottom and for, you know, dot, uh, normal. And again, uh, you know, for the sake of time, I didn't do it, but you could create a custom initializer on the custom button to just pass in uh, the title when you initialize it. So again, now we're really done with programmatic. Let's go to the storyboard. So if you look at the storyboard, uh, you don't see the bottom button because that is being done programmatically. Uh, here we have our top button. And really, I just dragged on a button, set some constraints on the storyboard, and we're good to go. What you need to do here is change the class to be a uh, custom button. So over here on the right in your identity inspector, you'll see this class. And you see it's kind of grayed out where it says UI button. Well, if you type in there, uh, you should get an autocomplete. If you start typing custom button, you see it auto completes, you hit enter. Now you're not going to see anything happen on the actual storyboard, but when you run it, then you'll see it. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, if you hit play here, let's check out our uh, app. And now you see we have both top and bottom are styled based on our custom button. And then if we go to our view controller, you see, uh, you know, aside from the constraint code, there's no styling code except for, you know, adding the title programmatically. Uh, you can see on the storyboard, we added our title like with typical storyboard stuff here, uh, calling it top in the inspector. See right there. And the only difference right now is that um, the top button doesn't shake when you tap it. That is because we didn't create our um, IB action. We can do that real quick just to kind of wrap up the tutorial here. Uh, so if you do option click to bring up the main storyboard, we have our top button. Uh, I can create control drag, you know, top button tapped. And you see this is of type custom button. Uh, hit connect. And then well, I need an outlet too because I need access to it. So let's create our outlet from the top button. So control drag here, uh, call this top custom button just to stay consistent. It is of type custom button. It is going to be strong. We are going to make it private. And now I can go down here in the uh, action here. Let's get off the storyboard and do spaces out, spaces out and do, you know, top custom button dot uh, shake. And remember, because top custom button uh, is of type custom button, everything is going to have shake. And that is the power of having these custom classes, especially if you have a lot of buttons that you want the same behavior or the same look and the same feel for. So let's rerun it. And then now both of them should shake, have the same exact behavior. So you can see how, again, if you have a ton of buttons that you want to do the same thing all throughout your app, just create one of these custom button classes, make those buttons uh, adhere to that class, and you're good to go. All right, if you like what I'm doing here, consider subscribing. I put out Swift news every Monday and a tutorial or two throughout the week. See you in the next one.